بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں اسلام علیکم پاکستان ویل ان آر لاسٹ سیشن وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ دی کسٹمر دا کنزیومر دا کلائنٹ وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ دا فیکٹ دیٹ دی کسٹمر از سوورن دا کسٹمر از آلویز رائٹ اینڈ از دی پرائم کنسرن آف اینی آرگنائزیشن بیکاز اٹ از تھرو دا کسٹمر دیٹ دی آرگنائزیشن از جنریٹنگ ریونیو اینڈ آلسو پروفیٹیبلٹی دیر فور دی کنسڈریشن آف دی کسٹمر از ویری امپارٹنٹ Ladies and gentlemen, as we tend to move forward, uh, we will see that uh, there, there are many other important stakeholders. And one of those important stakeholders is called the institutional investor. So this institutional investor is a very important component of corporate governance because they have a large stake within the organization. They are not a minority shareholder. They can be a majority shareholder. They can uh, be representing an institution which has immense clout. and based upon that cloud then they are uh, also ensuring that various standards various frameworks and good governance is being practiced by that particular organization now uh, when we talk about these institutional investors most of the reports in corporate governance have emphasized the role of which the institutional investors play in the corporate governance given the weight of their votes the institutional shareholders can effectively use their powers to influence the standards of corporate governance now that is extremely important like i was mentioning that because they have so many shares under one particular umbrella and many a times institutional investors tend to group together therefore they carry immense uh, stakeholder and shareholder rights which would influence the organization to do or not to do uh, many things in the cadbury report we see uh, that it is stated uh, because of their collective stake we look at the institutions in particular with the backing of the institutional shareholders committee to use their influence as owners to ensure that the companies in which they have invested comply with the code so uh, one of the most important reports uh, is the cadbury report and this report tends to reinforce and emphasize and highlight the role of the institutional uh, investor especially in the context of following the corporate code of governance so that is how the institutional investors also ensure that there is a very high level of professionalism within the organization and that the different stakeholders also remain within their domains rather than superseding those domains and creating chaos and confusion contrary to this particular school of thought that the investor has uh, a direct say in corporate governance there is also another school of thought which say that uh, investment objectives and the compensation system in the institutional investing companies often discourage their active participation in corporate governance so that is another school of thought that well on one side we say that uh, corporate governance can be pro- uh, can be promoted while on the other one we say that well maybe uh, the institution itself is so much embroiled and engrossed in their own issues that it becomes very difficult for them to uh, to involve themselves in the implementation of the corporate governance code in the institutions in which they are investing Uh, and peter drucker in 1976 this international guru uh, commented that it is their job to invest the beneficiaries m- money in the most profitable investment they have no business trying to manage it if they do not like a company or its management their duty is to sell the stock so peter drucker very simply said that institutional investors are there for profits for the profits of their shareholders so what they should do is that they should be concerned with the profitability of the organization if the organization is make a profit then they should remain with it if it's not then they should sell it and then try to do something else so that is extremely important because they are the ones who are basically uh, the uh, they are the ones who basically are the ones controlling a particular fund and therefore it is their responsibility to ensure that the stake and the rights of their shareholders are met without compromising uh, on what they are doing with the invest- with the company in which they have invested uh, well to give you some uh, examples of development finance related institutions in pakistan well we can look at uh, the pakistan kuwait investment company private limited the pak china invested company limited pak brunei investment company limited and pak oman investment company limited so these are all dfis and they are all involved uh, in uh, investing as institutional investors in various companies and they do carry their own cloud definitely but again they have different investments and their primary shareholder has to be their primary concern we we see that there is the uh, saudi park industrial agriculture investment company limited uh, pair investment company limited park libya holding company private limited zarai tarqiyati bank limited house building finance company limited pakistan micro investment company 
limited. So there are so many companies uh, which are involved in institutional uh, investments in uh, Pakistan. So uh, these are all there. Then there are certain insurance companies also uh, investing in Jubilee Life Insurance, EFU Life Insurance, Adamji Life Insurance, Alfla Insurance, Safe Life Corporation of Pakistan. So these insurance companies are also institutional investors and therefore carry immense cloud. There are different banks which are involved in it, the B Bank Investment, uh, National Bank of Pakistan, Mizan Bank, Faisal Bank, Bank Al Fala, Sunari Bank, and S3 Bank. So we see that banks are also involved in investment and all of these are major stakeholders in the stock market and also uh, play a role uh, many a times when uh, even their representative can also be on the board of a particular company. So yes, they are there for profits, but still uh, they are also there to ensure that the company follows professional conduct and frameworks and ethics so that there is more longevity and more sustainability of that organization coupled with the profits uh, that uh, they also want to see coming so that their uh, primary shareholder can also benefit. There are different mutual funds. Uh, there's the National Bank of Pakistan Money Market Fund, the NIT Money Market Fund, the Pakistan Management Fund, UBL Cash Fund, ABL Cash Fund, HBL Cash Fund. So these different mutual funds also tend to complement the stock market and also the institutional investors within different organizations in Pakistan. And the institutional investor is very important because it has immense clout uh, uh, because they are giving this, uh, they are giving this large uh, sum of money for the shares that they are purchasing and therefore they influence uh, the board and they can also influence the top management so that things are done in a better way. So that is what uh, these institutional investors are and that is their level of importance. Thank you so much. Tanish.